think after that we need to pray. <laughs> Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this hour of our revival. We thank you for each and every one that has crossed the threshold. We thank you for the purposes and intent that we're here tonight, and we pray that you would guide us in the way that you would have us to go and open up our ears and our minds that we may understand your word. We just thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we're yet prayerful for many that may not be saved. We just ask you to come in and sup with us, and we'll always give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. 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 We thank and praise God for each and, each and every one that has come out tonight. We want to share a word with you uh, from Exodus chapter 3. We're talking about just say yes. The next two nights I will be your speaker, this tonight and tomorrow night. And I have been asked to deliver a revival message. And that sort of sparked my interest when I, when I saw the word revival. Before I, I get started, I, I just want to acknowledge my mother, Evangelist Bernice Harden, who is in the audience tonight. And I, I have so much to be thankful for, and there are many creatures in my family, but my mother, the very first day the Lord called me in the ministry, she's been there ever since. And she is an excellent teacher, excellent student of the Bible, And she loves Christian ethics. These things were taught to me and to our family as children, her and my dad. I just thank God for you. Uh, she'll follow her children to the end when they're doing things for the, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But tonight and tomorrow night, we're going to uh, give you some scripture. Your, your text is Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, and then uh, proceeds to Exodus chapter 4, verse 17. We won't get there with all of that tonight. But I'm not so scripted because I want the Lord to tell you what he wants to tell you. But I want to talk about that word revival. And I wanted to ask you, do you know why you're here? And I wanted to ask you, what happened to us? A revival is a specific period of increased spiritual interest or renewal in the life of a congregation. Revivals are seen as a restoration of the church itself to a vital and fervent relationship with God after a period of decline. When you see the signs up that churches are having revivals, just know they are experiencing spiritual decline. It's not just Pleasant Green or, 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 or any other church. It's in the body of Christ. I don't want to focus on how long we have been in a decline. I want to focus on why. We are in a decline. And hopefully over the few nights that we'll be here, I don't just want to uh, target it and find it. I want us to fix it. 
Because if you have even a day of decline in terms of your relationship with God is a day too long. And we really don't enjoy the fruit of our relationship with God as long as that is a decline. And so many times, and, and what that really means is that we have strayed off course. And I see it all over the place. God set the course, as we'll see in Exodus chapter 3. It's, it's not God that has changed, it's us. Something happened to us. Now, we are calling the decline normal. And it's not normal. God is not pleased. He doesn't get the glory. Exodus chapter 3. So I want you to think about that. That decline can be individual or it could be corporate. Am I making sense? And as we look in Exodus chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, when I see, when I read scripture, and, and, I, and I'm going to share some things with you because we have to lift something out of this story with Moses. Quite frankly, he can't really help us now because he's gone. He's not in a revival, we are. But if we can look at uh, uh, I don't want you to just look at these verses that we're going to read and just look at Moses and not see God. Moses didn't call himself. And Moses didn't set the terms of the call. Keep that in mind. Exodus chapter 3. I'm going to read this from the NIV. I believe Nick has it up. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Verse 5, do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Are we still in the place that the Lord called us to? We don't like that word in churches these days. But God called us to it. He called you to it because he is. Am I making sense? So we can labor with this, but God has called Moses to his character. I'm going to make him say. And that's what we have been called to. We have been called and we are being transformed to the character of God, which is always holy. This is not an amen session, so 
Well, don't worry about that. L listen, I'm, I'm under commandment tonight. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Everybody that says that they are saved, at some point in time, you met God. So how could you meet a holy God and that did not affect you to be holy? Keep that in mind. We going somewhere. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave masters, and I am concerned about their suffering. Verse 8, so I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way that the Egyptians are oppressing them. I want to stop right there. In this revival, I want you to think about the terms of your call and what the Lord has called you to do. Keep in mind, Moses is not going around, uh, uh, down the street, around the corner to the store to, to pick up a gallon of milk. He's got to go get 600,000 folks. and bring them to the place that God has designated. When I was looking at this, I want to talk about what you, you won't see it there, but you got to understand God. Moses, what did he agree to? He agreed to sanctification. Do we know what that means? The process of being made holy resulting in a changed lifestyle for the believer. When God told Moses to take his shoes off or his sandals off, he was changed forever. Moses also agreed to consecration. Are, are you getting some idea of where and why we have had such a decline? We are not set apart for God's use. We are set apart for God and the devil. And the church has become compromised. I'm not asking. And we have got to fix this decline so we can get about the business of our father. Some folk don't believe that your life has to be changed. Huh? Some folk don't believe that you have to stop doing evil. I'm not asking. I was telling 
my wife earlier, you know, I'm kind of scared, Reverend. When I see the arrogance of believers coming up into the house of God and telling us when they confess their sin, they're saying they are not sanctified. Not for God's purpose. Did you see that when you read Moses 3? Consecration refers to persons or things being separated to or belonging to God. We are still saying it, it, it later than it is in the evening that you have been bought with a price. That's something you get out the gate. That's something you'll never forget. You, you know, I, 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 I thought about this. You know, you might sit here today and you might conclude that you may know more than me. I'll give you that. But one thing I do know is my foundation in the body of Christ. And whatever wind blows, you cannot take that from me. How the Lord brought me and how he taught me and how he showed me and how he trained me and how he led me. You can't take that from me. Believers experience, and, and, and I know once, and this is, this is spiritual, you won't, you won't see this, but when Moses took those sandals off, which represent where he came from, he'll never be the same. And we have to suffer sometimes. Huh? Your flesh has to be discipline now. He can't go back to what he used to do. He got to go where God tells him to go. Am I making sense? I'm still talking about this revival. And we are in such a spiritual decline, Pastor, the laws are being formed that we can't even say anything to you about it. Lest we offend you. Get the handcuffs out. One of the things that has happened and uh, Moses is agreeing to the terms. He knows who God is. He knows what God wants to do. He knows his purpose. His feet is touching holy ground. There's nowhere in the world I can pay attention to the laws. Huh? In terms of what I can't tell you and forget what God told me to do. Am I making sense? This is what I have been sanctified for. This is what you have been sanctified for. This is what you have been consecrated for. Another thing I lifted from this was dedication. Hmm? Folk just quit the church just like, you know, it's nothing. We're not dedicated to our responsibility. This is a job. Preaching the gospel is my job. I'm dedicated to it. I don't care what your position is. You ought to be dedicated to it. One thing God did with Moses, he locked him in to a covenant. This is between me and you. Covenants have is a is it's a binding agreement. 
And sometimes when we don't understand these terms, we turn our whole life upside down. A lot of the problems that we're having in the church, a lot of it is rebellion. You listen to folks sometimes. Listen to the first sentence that comes out of their mouth. They say, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not doing. They never mention God. Moses is agreeing to being dedicated, a general term used in the Bible to describe an act of setting apart or consecrating persons or things to God. That's where you have to find yourself. Sanctify. They used to say that, Clint, when we was a, a, a boys, you know, did you, you're going to that sanctified church? Well, they all should be. Right? They were storefronts. But you should be sanctified. You should be consecrated. And you should be dedicated. And if you are those things, we'll fix a lot of Don't you believe that? Huh? Don't you understand that? Huh? Why are we listening to other things that are guiding us away from the purposes of God? Surely it is God's business to choose his special instruments. And when we are persuaded that we are in line of his purpose, we have no right to question his wisdom. We have no rights. Huh? If you know the Lord have called you, huh, and you have agreed like Moses, you have no right. You are not your own. You can't do what you want to do. You can't go. I mean, you really can. But it's consequences. I suffered, as I shared with you all on occasion, many days until I got over here to Pleasant Green. And do you know, nobody could help me. God was saying, go, go, hold up, hold up. Huh? And basically what I was doing was questioning his wisdom yeah, yeah. when I actually had no rights. And I got over here and my feet touched this ground. And, huh? That bird lifted. We have no right to question the wisdom of his appointment. I say to you all, all the time, I'm here on assignment. Huh? Folk have been pulling at me to come do this and, 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 and do that, and that's fine in its place. But I can't do what you tell me to do and do what he tell me to do. Moses can't do what his wife or somebody else tells him to do and forget what God has now commanded him. You got to go get these folks out. And he, actually, he didn't say get. Right? But when God is causing you, hmm, he knows the end before the beginning. So he allowed Moses to question him. And we know the story. Moses got in a little trouble when it was time to go in the promised land. We have an assignment, Pleasant Green. 
We got to go get the unsaved. Am I making sense? You're going to have to be sanctified to get somebody that's born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You're going to have to be consecrated to persuade that unbeliever to put down his whole life of sin. You're going to have to be dedicated. Huh? Because actually your life is your witness. Forget about the words and how much scripture you know. When I see how you act, you really don't need to tell me nothing. Hello, walls. How many people do the Lord want us to go get? Hmm? Romans chapter 10 said, whosoever. So we don't have a number. Right? But it's incumbent upon us to stay in the position, stay with the turn. I know it's, it's, it's contemporary for us to do all of these ungodly things in the church, but once we become contaminated, let me tell you something what the devil will do. What did Jesus tell Peter? He said, Satan, ask permission, one translation said. Huh? The devil will sift pleasant green like wheat. You won't even have a purpose. You'll just be on page. Huh? You, you might understand this, you know you have a reputation in the world. You understand that? And we either gonna draw or we gonna drive. Huh? I want to go back over to Exodus chapter 3. And we're gonna go down to verse 10, I'm almost through. But tomorrow night, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked you tonight. Hmm? Why are you here? Hmm? You told somebody you were going to a revival, right? Did they ask you why you were came? We're not here because of our strengths. We're here because of our weaknesses. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Think about that for a minute. We're weak some way, right? We've talked about spiritual continuity since I've been here. We're weak some way. And I'm going to tell you exactly where you're weak at. Will you believe me? Huh? You know the word, but you're weak in application. In other words, you have to learn how to read this, take it off that page, put it in your life. And then when somebody sees it, they'll say, there, ooh, that's a Christian right there. Stop going to the places. Can I help you? Stop going to the places that you used to go before your feet hit holy ground. I'm trying to help. Stop doing the things. 
I love, I, I believe this is uh, 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 Romans 6. It, uh, help me out there. Uh, he said, what benefit did you derive from your sin? Huh? Those things result in death. You might say, well, you know what, I, I, Reverend Park, I'm going to leave this alone, but I don't even have to preach about your sin. I pick up your spirit that is dead. Yeah, yeah. Don't play with my gift. I won't play with you. Am I making sense? But I know when something is dead, and I know when something is alive. Yeah. This is a revival. Huh? I'm not picking on you. I'm actually preaching to the atmosphere. I don't, I don't see none of y'all. Really. More on that later. But go over to Ephesians chapter 1 when you get time. I preach to that unseen realm because I know the devil is mad. And you all haven't said one amen, but I've been kicking in his door ever since I took the flow. In the Lord, all right. Moses' mission. Huh? Do you ever think about your mission? I'm working on a and we have the legacy committee for the sanctuary, but I'm, I'm working on my legacy for after I'm gone. <laughs> I'm trying to leave something for my children and my children's children. Moses is going down to Egypt land to pick up some families. Yeah. Exodus chapter 3. Look at verse 10. After God has explained the terms to him, he says, so now go, huh? I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. You have the capacity. If you stay like the Lord made you when he saved you, you have the capacity to bring somebody out. No, they sin. Don't leave it up to President Obama. He can't stop it. Huh? They can't build the jails fast enough. They can't keep crime. They can't keep us safe. John works very hard, but sometimes when he come into the meetings, he said, pray for me. The job is just tremendous. The killing. Huh? But the saints of God that have been sanctified like Moses, that says yes to the Lord, have been consecrated and dedicated, we can change some things. Why would God send one man? to go get 600,000 folks and their animals. Get the dog, too. One man was given instruction to go get more than, the Bible says, a multitude. The, the devil been telling you you can't have no effect. Or, that's a lie. And when we see it getting so bad, instead of us staying on the ship, we jump off the sanctifica a sanctification ship. Don't be a turncoat. Huh? 
for God I live. Huh? And for God I'll die. That's just the way it is. Look at this here in verse 11. But Moses said to God, who am I? You ain't nobody without me. In the 15th chapter, St. John, Jesus said, apart from me, you ain't nobody. You can't do nothing. He's questioning God's appointment. Who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And God said, look at this, I will be with you. If you lose every friend because you're sanctified, because you're consecrated, and because you're dedicated, God is saying, I'll be. Jesus told his disciples, he said, my peace give I unto you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. Huh? When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain, the same one that I'm giving you instruction. Go get them folks and bring them back over here. And I'm going to start teaching them the same thing I taught you. Doesn't that make sense? Verse 13. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites. And say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? You know what, I, I, Flint, I still I, I hear Christians saying something told me. <laughs> well, if I was listening or hearing a mysterious individual, Don't you know the Holy Ghost? Don't you know how to say the Spirit of the Lord? Something told me I should do this. Well, don't do anything until you put a name on it. If you call my house, Barry, and I don't recognize your voice, I'm going to say, who is it? <laughs> when you're hearing these voices, ask, who is it? God says here, say to them, huh? The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Huh? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am. That'll settle it real quick. Huh? Say, no, baby, I can't go with you. Who told you can't go? I am, said, don't go. <laughs> You'd be surprised, and it, 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 it sounds funny, but this is the reason for our decline. I, I, I said this before, I, I'll say it to you tonight. You shouldn't go anywhere without discernment. Amen. Huh? I told a Sunday school class Sunday, I said, you know what? It's dangerous out here. Some of you all shouldn't even visit other churches. When I sit here, Pastor Bob, I'm, I'm trying to lead us along. When I, when I sit here on Sunday and I'm looking out and I see you all coming through the door, you know what I look for? 
Who got something in their hand? Coming up in the house of the Lord empty-handed. Well, then I have to conclude you might have a, an app on your phone. Don't trust everything that I tell you without checking it for yourself. I'm still talking about Moses. But y'all know he gone. There's only so much he gonna be able to help us out with tonight. God said to Moses in verse 15, Say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation huh? to generation. going to talk about the Lord say the same the mother of Jesus and we're going to talk about what she agreed to but don't forget we are here for a purpose right that's the whole thing and we know there's decline. So let's, uh, let, let those antennas go up. And wherever you're weak, I hope that through these four nights that take some doctrine and some understanding of the word. I'm going to make that just a little bit easier to tell you one of your children that may have a lot. If there's someone here tonight does not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. We ask you, invite you to come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's time, church. It's time for us to live this thing the way it was intended. Folk are saying a lot of things about Jesus in terms of what he, what sin he will accept. But over in the sixth chapter of Romans, the Bible said the death that he died, he died to sin. And we have to die that death every day that we might be the fruit and bear the righteousness of a holy gospel. Seeing there is none, but yet there is room. We thank you for your participation tonight. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you for your prayers. Just know this, Pleasant Green, I do this all the time. God has brought me through too much. And I got one shot at this. I got a ticket to live when God said, I spared you because you was willing. It gave me another opportunity to live. And this is how I have to do it. Those are the terms of my call. Hmm? That's exactly what he told me. I spared you. Huh? I didn't ask any questions. I said, yes, Lord. And I am. Just know that I love you. And anything that I can do to edify the body of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you all, but sin is raising the level. Yeah. 
we're going to have to be ready biblically and spiritually to combat it.